YouTube back with back another video. Today, uh, I just woke up to the postman or the UPS guy or FedEx, whatever. I, I forgot which one it was, but got some new CPUs for the workstation. But check this out. As you can see, here is my new Dell Precision workstation that I got for 100 bucks the other day. If you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out. And look, it is a Hackintosh, guys. Fully up and running. Oh, I can get the camera angle right. Sorry for the bad angles and all that. Just woke up. Just wanted to do a quick little vlog before I started. But check that out, guys. Fully working Hackintosh. Dell Precision T7600. And sorry about the lighting, by the way. Lighting's pretty bad as well. But, uh, yeah. Got it working with Mac OS X. Focus. Those are the specs. Uh, I have it running as a iMac in the SM BIOS. Um, but it's okay. It's whatever. But, uh, yeah. The RX 580 is recognized 100%. Focus. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, that'll, I'll explain that later. Uh, all that stuff. Everything's working great. If I can focus. Jeez. But, um... <clears throat> Yeah, guys, everything's working good. It's a Hackintosh fully up and running. Uh, I really said I wasn't going to do that. I said I wasn't going to Hackintosh it, but in the end, I tried. It took four days to get running, which is um, the really unfortunate part about it. It took four days to troubleshoot, you know, work through all the kinks, and finally get it up and running stable. No crashes, no nothing. Um, I'll go into depth in a later video, but this is the main point what I wanted to talk about today. This right here. These are my new CPUs for the, if I can get it with one hand, workstation. These are two Xeon E5 2643s. Get my brush out of the way. And I'm going to be installing those today. And also, here is the 5.1 Mac Pro. And this is a new Mac I was talking about um, last week. I didn't get a chance to make a video last week, but this is the Mac I was talking about. Uh, this is a Power Mac G5 Dual 2.7 water-cooled. Uh, the video should be out on Thursday, I believe. Um, I'll make a video about that. Be really excited for that. Power PC Challenge may or may not be coming, depending on what my schedule is looking like. But here is the 6-core Mac Pro. So yeah, let's go ahead and get to installing the CPUs. Alright guys, so I am back. Got all my parts laid out right here. Um, sorry about the lighting. Lighting's pretty bad right now, but it's okay. Um, here are my two CPUs. These are two Eon E5 2643s. Um, these are two quad cores. I'm staying with the eight core because uh, single threaded performance goes down as you move up in cores. So uh, these are the ones I chose. Um, three gigahertz a piece. So that's pretty good. And I'm not really working with Turbo Boost because it's a hack and toss and doesn't really work well. So that's that. Uh, thermal paste, I want some Best Buy brand thermal, t well it's not Best Buy brand, it's Thermal Take TG7 Thermal Compound, will be working just fine. Uh, Anti-aesthetic wristband, I don't want to short anything out. Uh, and then a regular screwdriver, a uh, a pretty long one I guess, because the sockets in the LJ2011 are kind of recessed in the heat sink, so I'm going to have to use that. And then just some uh, alcohol. Just to clean the top of the surface off before I install them. So, I'm going to go ahead and bring the Dell Precision T7600 over here. And we can go ahead and begin with the install. So, I am back at a slightly more echoey location. Uh, a little bit better lighting. But, yeah, I'm tethered down to the Precision Workstation. I'm going to go ahead and start by removing the RX 580. And I'm sorry if this gets in the way at any time of the video, guys. I'm sorry, but it's... <laughs> It's annoying, but I have to do it. I want to be protected against ESD, so go ahead and remove the RX 580. I'm going to the power plug. Okay. And get this out of the way. And there's the RX 580. As you guys know, I installed this on my Mac Pro not too long ago. Set this onto the side over here. Now, I know it's not too good of an angle, but you guys can get a general idea of what I'm doing. Um, I'm not going to remove my PCI SSD. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and start by removing the two CPU fan headers, if I can get to them. No, I can't. So I'm going to remove the fans first. So, take my screwdriver that I was talking about earlier. And let's go ahead and start by going in a start pattern. I'm going to start on this CPU first. Doing two turns each.
There's the heat sink. Pretty big, does a pretty good job in cooling the uh, processors. All right. All right, there's one CPU. Let's go ahead and do the other one. Another heat sink. Alrighty guys, let's take off the tripod for just a second to kind of show you what I got going on over here. So, my old 2609 CPUs, the new E5 2643, if you can see that. You can't really, but whatever. Um, the old heat sinks, or the heat sinks with old thermal compound on them. The sockets, if it'll focus. Another socket, the RAM. And yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and cleanse these CPUs off. I already did these two. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the tops of these or bottoms of these cleaned off, and we'll go ahead and get the new CPUs installed. Alrighty, my processors all cleaned up. There are the 26. Uh, can I see it? 2643s right there. All 2609s. Uh, I got my heat sinks cleaned up for the most part. Still needs a lot of work, but hey. I did what I can with a half, like not even a half bowl, or bowl, what am I talking about? A half can of air duster. I got what I could done, so I'm going to go ahead and reinstall these CPUs, and then we can go put the heatsink on and be gone on our way. Alright, I'm right, going to go ahead and take the first 2643 Xeon in, align it with the notch on the motherboard. Alright, go ahead and drop it in. Oh crap, hold on. Get a little wiggle. All right, and it says to lock to this one first, and then do this one. Oh crap! Wrong one. This one first, maybe. This one first. Yeah, come on. There we go. And then this one. I'm going to make sure the CPU pins aren't damaged real quick. Hold on, guys. All right, so I just checked. Everything's good. No pin pins. It feels like you're going to break it, but you're not. So it's kind of crazy. But anyway, back on to the next one. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Come on. Open this open. Okay. Come around this side. Wiggle. Make sure. And do the locking on first. Come on. There we go. And then do this one. Come on. There we go. I think that's in, guys. Um, looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and get my thermal compound. And put a small line on the center of the CPU. My hand would stop shaking. All right. All right, a small little glob of thermal compound. And that should be good, I guess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble my fan heat sinks, and I'll catch you when. Alrighty, guys, so I reassemble my CPU coolers. You can see here's one. Let me go ahead and set this one on CPU number one. Let me just reconnect my oh. reconnect my uh, little what is the thing called? <sighs> what is it called? The uh, electrostatic wrap or electrostatic discharge strap. I think I, I don't know. But this is going on CPU number uno, I think. I'm pretty sure it's CPU number one. How can I align them? All right, I think that's in. Do a star pattern starting from the top. And I don't think you have to go from the top. I think it's just a matter of personal preference. Okay. 
All right, that's number one on. That took way, way, way longer than I expected. <laughs> All right, make sure that's on. Get the second one going. And I'm sorry if this stupid strap's in the way, guys. I really am. And if this video is a little bit long-winded, I'm just trying to make sure I take good time and not break it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I think that's on all four posts. Go ahead and tighten it in a spot pattern once again. Alright, so that completes the upgrade for the most part. I'm going to go ahead and set this back up upstairs and see if it boots. Alrighty, alrighty guys. So we are back in the office area. Sorry about the low light. But, um, everything's back in. Everything's plugged back in. I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in to the wall. Power or not. Hold on. Come on. There we go. It looks like it's powering on now. Let's see what it does. Oh, or not. Hold on. Alright, looks like the CPU fans are kicking on. A little bit dirty. Let's see what it does. Okay, we got a post. So it did post. CPUs work. Great. I'm gonna go ahead and boot into my Hackintosh and see if everything's recognized. All right, we should be booting to the uh, Mac SSD, which is the PCIe SSD. Let's see if it boots. Oh, okay. We have an Apple logo. Let's see if she boots. And we're booting. Look at that, guys. A successful upgrade to dual E5-2643s. And uh, while I was booting up, I also wanted to explain to you why I kind of chose the uh, E5-2643s. The 2609s that were in here before were dual quad cores, but they were not hyper-threaded. They only had, uh, there was eight cores, eight threads uh, for both CPUs. This one, we now we have eight cores, 16 threads. So now we have a true... A uh, nice eight-core CPU system with eight with sixteen threads, and it should be good for video editing and stuff like that. Now let's go ahead and get into the benchmarks of before and after.